Welcome back, adventurers. To what is almost certainly the final episode of Let's Play Chaos Child. In the last episode, Takuru Miyashiro stood his ground against Suichi Wakui of the Committee of 300, in spite of the fact that his enemy clearly had the distinctive advantage. Yet, Takuru had a ploy of his own. He tempted Wakui with a game of sorts. A chance to see whether or not Takuru Miyashiro could actually stand against uh, the might of the Committee of 300. And if he lost, if he failed, then he would return to the delusionary world. He would return to being a gigalomaniac. And he would cooperate with Wakui and the committee. Needless to say, Wakui accepted and vanished. Unfortunately, taking with him all the data on the committee that Mio Kunisato had been trying so desperately for so long to obtain. But the only thing they can do now is uh, restore the Chaos Child Syndrome patients with the 12th Rorschach. And with all that said and done, in a very melancholic way, and a very anticlimactic way, Takuru, Mio, and Shinjo said their farewells to Seriko Noe who went to the theatre cube at the Hokaru World Building for reasons that she herself couldn't quite understand. But when she was there, the pain, the anguish at what Takuru Miyashiro was about to do to her on that fateful final encounter, it all came flooding back. But not the rest of the memories, not her dark and twisted, sadistic personality. That has been eternally sealed away. The memories have tried to make their return, but Takuru Miyashiro has done everything he can to put a stop to that. And Serika Inoue, being the existence that she is, is virtually powerless to undo what Takuru has done to her. But this isn't over yet. October 2016. Eight months later. Back at the general hospital. Again. It's Senri Manami Sawa. As she bowed to the nurse who'd come uh who she come to know quite well. Senri Manami Sawa. The girl who was once Ku uh, Nono Kurusu checked the time. It was almost noon. The exams were getting shorter and shorter. I hadn't even given her any drugs today. At least those drugs would be the normal medicinal kind instead of the inhuman drugs that were given to her by the committee. I probably meant she was getting better. Now that she has finally resumed her original identity. <laughs> and there is Uki Yamazoe, who is still treating Serika the same way. Uki Yamazoe, whose exam had evidently been as short as hers, came down from the psych ward on the fifth floor. When she saw Senri, she ran over. I wonder. 
姉さんも今日は終わりコーラ病院内は走らないうん I've said it before and I'll say it again old habits die hard because of how long that Senri has been living as Nano Kurusu it's not that easy to let go of those、uh, behavioral habits Senri felt herself smile as she watched her little sister walk fast but not run toward the front desk. But everyone had Chaos Child Syndrome. Or did they? Maybe, uh, maybe they're still trapped. Maybe this is the delusionary world. Her little sister had struggled with her normal therapy, but now she could run and、uh, walk and run like a normal girl now. She wanted to be a nurse, just like Senri. It would be the perfect type,、uh, perfect job for her. I keep ad libbing words there. My mind is just all over the place. じゃあ行こっか。思ったより早かったから、みんなをランチに誘ってみる。来てくれると思うわ。うん。あ。ユキ suddenly seemed to remember something and stopped. 忘れ物？ A feeling, perhaps. <laughs> Uki was choosing her words carefully as she looked at the elevator that had just come down. Then we put her hand on her little sister's head. Chanto, I said to a summer at the show. So that they're more true. Goodbye. Goodbye to whom? So any psyche of a cave in a game show there, that I'm much higher than I was. Demo Uki still seems worried. だからいいのよ、ウキ。そうしちゃダメなんだから。ね。Her little sister nodded a second later, and Senri smiled. And it's Hanai and Kazuki. Did they recover? Did the 12th Rorschach work on them as well as the other Chaos Star patients? When she contacted them on her phone, she found that Hanai Arumoto and Hana Kazuki had, been, had both been waiting for her call all morning. They met in front of Shibuya Station and started walking. It had been a long time since the four of them had gone through the city together like this. They saw each other often at the hospital, but their exams and physical therapy were all at different times, which made it hard to schedule anything. Yeah, getting that sense of、uh, vertigo, if one can even call it that. I think the word. Actually, no. The, 
dissonance is probably uh, the better term than vertigo. But today was a very was a special day. Even if they didn't say anything, they all knew they were going to meet. ユートならユートなら学校のお友達と図書館へ行ったわ。あ、つくっさい。うわ、せっかくの休みに図書館とか。末恐ろしいなあ、おい。I Well, it's a dream. Bengoshi? Kodomo no yume ni shicha zuibun. I'm sure there are many children out there who dream to be lawyers. De ah? Oh, so that's it. And I almost said, but she stopped herself. Both Hana and Hinai immediately understood the meaning of Yuto Ta Tachibana's childhood dream, as well as the fact that it might even come true. And Yuto knew what day it was too. That had to have been why he went to the library with his friends, just like the four of them had gathered together. Indescribable sadness was threatening to build up between them. <sighs> I think I know why Yuto went to the library. Maybe. It was Arimoto's loud voice that broke the silence. あの、そう、のんびりしてるとどの店も満席になっちまいますぜ。そ、そうね。どこで食べる超お腹空いてるので、いつものカフェでいいと思います。どうみんな。そう、ベースクリーカフェアレックス。アゲン。yeah, at this point we're pretty much regulars by now. Lead on then. Can I raised one hand up like a tour guide and wrapped the other around Hana's. The two of them had been hanging out a lot together, uh, together a lot recently. And then she plunged into the crowd. There were no Chaos Child Syndrome patients to be seen. Maybe uh, Mio and Takuru's plan Worked. But at what price? Eight months ago, over 80% of the Chaos Child Syndrome patients in Shibuya all fell conscious, unconscious at once. They were all quickly split up and taken to nearby hospitals. The hospitals were overflowing with patients. It was almost like the earthquake six years, no, seven years ago now. Even those patients who had escaped the initial wave quickly fell unconscious as well and were also taken to hospitals. Fortunately, no one was seriously injured, physically at least. But they probably would have been trapped within the delusion synchronicity. 
Several people were injured where, when they'd fallen, but none of them badly. And several days later, the patients began to wake up, almost all of them in a state of extreme panic. They couldn't believe their real forms. But, uh, the Rorschach must have uh, worked. Takuri's gambit must have paid off because uh, everyone's recovered. Senri, Hinai, and the others woke up at the same time and were terribly confused. But they didn't panic like the others. They quickly realized that he was involved and that he had done this for everyone's sake. Well, at least he was able to do what uh, even Takami Nishijo could not. And so all the patients returned to a normal but harsh reality. So this is the real world, at long last. A world still, however, uh, containing the infamous Committee of 300, however. But right here, right now, at this moment in time, it is just a normal day. Senri realized that she'd stopped walking, uh, sorry, walking, as she reflected on the past. She ran to catch up with the others. What had happened when she was asleep? A lot of things. Right after she'd woken up, Takuru had told her himself. Kunisato and Shinjo had let her meet him in a special hospital room. He'd also told her about Serika's true nature and the truth behind the return of the new generation madness. Wakawi, the committee in Chaos Child Syndrome too. He told her about everything. And lastly, he told her the truth about Sakama, the father she'd believed in. It's been a long time coming, and I was honestly starting to think that it would never come. But at least Senri knows the truth. At long last. It is a bitter truth. And there was something that she, Senri Minamisawa, or Nono Kurisu, depending, had to tell him too. Now that she didn't look like Nono Kurisu anymore, there was no way she could keep up the lie. She did trouble working up the courage before she went into Takuru's room. She'd hesitated so many times and almost thought about not meeting him at all. But it was the other girls from her room that scolded her and urged her on. She'd been the last to wake up because of the wound in her chest. And by the time she did, Uki, Hanai, and Hana had already seen the real her. And everyone had forgiven her without saying a word. Because up until that point, they knew the truth. But when she'd hesitated about meeting Takuru, they'd gotten really mad. Can't you trust him, they asked. Is he the kind of guy who wouldn't forgive you? And that was enough for her to decide. Although, in spite of her anxieties, Senri needn't have wor worried. After she told him everything, Takuru had laughed gently. Every time she remembered his voice then, 
She felt like she would cry. But where is Takuru right now? Who knows? Senri gave up her old name and body and went back to being herself. She'd been forced into six months of physical therapy, not just because of the syndrome, but the stab wound as well. But at last, she was capable of going outside on her own. Huzzah. She'd gone back to Hekio Academy, which was now just a normal private school, and started living the life of a normal student along with the others. Anna? And of course, uh, now that uh, they no longer have to worry about their gigolomaniac powers, or rather she, I should say, she being Kazuki, she can finally talk normally again, without uh, any worries whatsoever. いつも通りね。でも、もう薬も処方されてないし、そろそろ治療もおしまいかしら。Yeah, that is a huge relief. かずきの方はうん。私もそうかも。But she still uh, has a Interesting little way of phrasing. Kazuki looked up at the sky as she spoke. She'd been lying to everyone too. And just like Shin Senri, she'd been reluctant to admit it, and Hanai had scolded her too. When she'd opened up to Takuru about her lie, he forgave her like nothing was wrong at all. It was like... He already knew. Even after losing her power, Hana didn't st uh, still didn't talk a lot, but she was trying her best. That was her promise to Takuru, she thought. Shibuya was filled with people enjoying their day off. And Senri and the others were living the same lives as everyone else at long last. Except for one person. The boy who had been at their center. They'd only brought it up during a small silence after they'd eaten lunch at the usual cafe. At first, no one wanted to discuss it. Though, of course... Yeah. You can dance around it uh, all you like, but you're going to have to confront it sooner or later. But about the same time that Senri had gotten tired of watching the ice melt in her ice tea, Hinai opened her mouth to speak. She pointed to the phone in her hand. It was displaying a gossip site. The article was about Takuru. Because in this reality, in order to uh, affect the minds of the Chaos Child, patients in such a way to reach out to them in such a broad fashion to affect the delusion synchro he basically had to uh, set himself up as the serial killer behind the return of the new generation madness it said that Taku Miyashiro the boy responsible for the serial killing in Shibuya 
have been kept at AH Tokyo General Hospital to aid in research on Chaos Child Syndrome. And now that the research was mostly finished, he was finally sent to a detention house for the real de interrogations to begin. Or they would if uh, Mio, Shinjo, and Momose. Yeah, weren't involved. Even if he was a minor, in light of the effect of his uh, in light of the effect his crimes had on society, the article said, there was no chance he'd ever be getting out. It said all that in sensational and exaggerated tones. The internet, usually. Most of the, what the article was said was right. Most, but not all. And Shinjo told them that the day Takuru would be transferred was today. They were able to say goodbye a while before. Shinjo had set it all up. The last time they met, Takuru had asked them for a favor. It involved Seruko and Oe. Stay away from her, unless she comes to you. If she does come to you, forgive her and treat her like a normal friend. And never tell her about me or her past. Of course, there is still the very real chance that she will remember one way or another, eventually. He'd insisted on these three things until the very end. In order to keep the attention of Wakui and the committee firmly on him. Serika hadn't come to them at all. Kunisaru told them that she lived in Yokohama and was attending Hekio from there, but they hadn't heard anything else. She's still bound by her compulsion. This conversation has definitely taken a very morose tone. No one was sure if Uki's question was about Takuru or Saruka, or maybe both of them. Indeed, we can't stay here forever. The waitress, who shall remain nameless, will be mad at us if we do. When she stood up to go, Senri realized something. Oh, that's right. Maybe she was asking about us. What are we doing right now? Having lunch at Cafe LAX. Takuru had a spot in the cafe where we always sat. Senri found herself looking at it. And almost cried again. Four of them left the cafe and slowly headed for the station. They planned to split up and go home from there. None of them were looking at their phones, but all their heads their heads were all bent lower than normal, but no one noticed. <sighs> Parting is uh, such sweet sorrow. Just before the light turned green, Senri realized they were completely buried and the people surrounding them. Her mouth opened on its own. Let's see the movie. 
Sure, why not? The other three looked up in surprise. Their mouths fell in shock. They seemed to have been caught completely off guard. Well, in this situation, why not? She was right. The sun hadn't even begun to set. It's still blue sky out there. Still plenty of daylight. But they still can't forget. Her eyes suddenly started to tear at her hair. Well, on that note, you failed completely. Oh well. Her twin tails spun angrily in a very exaggerated manner. そうじゃなきゃ、彼氏でもないあんたとはい、はい。じゃあ、付き合ってくれるのね、映画。yeah, I think people start to stare at us too much if things get out of hand here. Bachkoi! Can I clapped her hands together and then spread her arms as if to give Senri a hug? Yeah. Uki wa? Kono ato yote nai desho? Uki made the same face she made at the hospital. Let's go back to the hospital after all, she seems to say. She wants to see Taguru. But he won't be there anymore. It's almost time, isn't it? Senri knew Uki was worried about her. And that's when she smiled back, silently. Because if she did meet Takuru, she would grab onto him and break down in tears. She didn't think she had it in her to control herself. And she didn't want to let her little brother see her like that. She was never going to let him worry about her again. So... できれば楽しい映画がいいな。タクルに手紙を書きたいの。みんなで楽しい映画を見たわよって。well, at least Uki is cheered up. You know what? It's better if I don't say anything. Oh, Then I tried to tease them, but they both looked back at her and spoke in unison. Senri mischievously and Uki extremely seriously. Now who's the one caught off guard? And I staggered back in exaggerated astonishment and Sinri gave her a pat to move her along. <laughs> Sinri went to the front and started to walk. I 
Unlike a moment ago, she was standing tall, ready to face whatever fate had in store for her. Uki went after her, her footsteps steady and firm as well. The remaining two looked at each other for a moment. And then they started to laugh and ran to catch up to the sisters. あ、待ってください、and so they go, the four friends, off into the future. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at AH Tokyo General Hospital. Huh, that's strange. There was supposed to be data in here. Supposedly. The door opened and an angry Kunisato came inside. Sumimasen. Aitsura no kekka nara, itsu mo doori clean da. Ima no tokoro, saihatsu no asore wa nai. Relapse. That is a terrifying thought. But for the time being, everyone's doing just fine. Everyone's recovered. I gave a small sigh of relief when I heard that. Good. The treatment seems uh, seem to be working well. So the, ano, it's made no no. センリたちの検査って続くんですかお前これから連れて行かれる時に人の心配なんてプリマッチまあいいそういうやつだったなお前はクルサドサイドレッドエンレジグネーシ <笑> いま、あいつらに行っているのは染色体に異常が見られないかどうかの検査だけだ。まあ、健康診断みたいなものだが。少なくとも老化の原因が完全に突き止められるまでは検査は続ける。今は週に1回だが、検査回数は徐々に減ら
There were structures called telomeres at the end of a chromosome that were related to the aging process in some way. As for what they are, a telomere is a repeated set of base pairs at the end of, of a chromosome. Since it has been confirmed that they get shorter with each cell division, ooh, that achievement unlocked. Tips complete. This is the uh, this is the final tip. Bizarre. And telomere shortening has been seen in patients suffering from accelerated aging disorders. It is believed they are deeply connected with cellular aging and thus with the aging of the entire body. We have them all. How many tips do we have in total? Quite a lot. A huge number, in fact. That was the final one. 134 tips. There we go. Now we know. Yeah. But of course it would take a while for Mio Kunisato to realize that the... Uh, yeah, the fact that channeling um, negative particles through the use of their D-swords and their own powers has very negative impact on the physiology of a gigalomaniac. There were signs that Chaos Child symptom patients were artificially creating them inside their bodies. These false telom sorry, telomeres shortened at a great accelerated rate that drastically restricted the number of times a cell could divide. The hypothesis was that the brain recognized these artificial telomeres as real and initiated the aging process. But much of that was still in the realm of hypothesis and Kunisato herself didn't seem satisfied with the explanation at all. But whatever the underlying principle was, when I asked her about what happened, she shrugged and said this. <笑>精神や肉体が、こう勘違いしている性じゃないか。妄想の世界で生きるということは、新しい自分に生まれ変わることだ、とな。Could be, but as we just said, it's all in the realm of speculation right now. So, the phenomenon where these mistakes or errors would occur along the chromosome had been known in the medical world for a long time. That's right, it was the same mechanism as cancer. In other words, former Chaos Child symptom patients were at a high risk of developing that disease. But Senri and the others seem to be doing okay. Senri and the others would probably keep getting exams to look for those errors in their cells without or without knowing why. Hmm. For some reason, uh, I get a flash of uh, the face of Senna Aoi whenever I hear the word error now. And according to Kunisato, she had no idea when those exams might end. They might go on forever. Although given the fact that Senri is uh, getting reduced medication, that seems to be a step in the right direction. At least as far as her health is concerned. <laughs> then there is the matter of Takuru's own physiology. Kunisato stared at me, as if trying to peer into the bottom of my heart. 
かなり長い間お前はインターネットにアクセスできなくなる生まれて初めてのことじゃないかえ、eh, you're not wrong yeah come to think of it she was right the internet already existed when I was born about the time I hit puberty it was everywhere 情報強者を辞任していたお前がその最大の手段を失い情報の規制を受ける場合によっては情報から遮断されるかもしれないそういう生活が当然となった時お前の思考回路はそれまでとどう変化するんだろうな That is a good question. <laughs> a while ago, I might have panicked just thinking about it. But that was the old Takuru. Strangely, I didn't feel like it now. Hageshi, Joho no Nami, ni sara sara te ita omae to. Nami no mattaku nai. Shizuka na umi ni tadayo omae. Seishin te ki ni dou hen ka suru ka. Tanoshimi da yo. Yeah, I do vaguely recall a promise of that sort. Ah, so that Tana. And of course, she hasn't forgotten. Ito no Yatsua, Shoko Gun Dake de Naku, no no homo, Zibun Kaifushikta so this ne. Taskarimasta. Shendro told me that Ito would be prosecuted, but in the end, he'd probably be given medical treat, uh, treatment at a medical facility for minors, especially since uh, everyone now believes that Takuru is the mastermind responsible for the murders. I didn't know how long it would take, but I was relieved to know he'd eventually go free. Remembering Yui made my heart ache, but it wasn't his fault. It was Sakuma's, and unfortunately, Seriko Noe's as well. Kunosato-san, wa, gore kara dou suru tsumori desu? Yeah, unfortunately, thanks to the stunt work we pulled, Mio's kind of in a rut. I remembered something I wanted to ask before I left this place. Kunisato's eyebrows rose in surprise. Totally. <laughs> And then I saw a little smile form around her mouth. So, Narihota Moskasta or Maitoa Nagaitski and Narukamasirena Bakuiva or Mainokoto, Kansokus to the Kerr. So it tandaro. ワークビアンズゲームズこの先お前が自分に振りかかってくる状況に絶望しあるいは恐怖し再びギガロマニアックスとしての力を取り返してしまうか否かそれがやつとのゲームというわけだ Of course, if he doesn't give in, then Wakabi is nothing. 
And as we've already seen, the Committee of 300 uh, do not c take kindly to failure. だったら、お前は生かされ続ける。私もお前の観測を続けよう。奴の尻尾を掴むためにな。Game of cat and mouse. Ego. Oh, Shinjo, you're still here. It was a knock at the door, and I heard a voice I knew well. Shinjo came in with a serious look on his face. <clears throat> he was looking at me, seemingly uncertain as to what to say. I waited, motionless, until finally he sighed. Shinjo said the words. <sighs> Looks like the transfer is underway. I... I slowly stood up from the chair. Shinjo knew the truth, but still accepted my decision. I could do nothing but be grateful for that. I knew how hard it, that had to be for a detective. You've come a long way, Shinjo. I bowed deeply. いや、君に比べたらどうということはないさ。True enough. He put his hand on my shoulder. It was big and strong. If I had known to a brother, would he have been like this? Who can say? <laughs> it was another detective on the other side of the door ready to take me to the transport. The rest of the world still didn't really know what I looked like after I'd recovered from ch Chaos Child Syndrome. It was Shinjo who convinced the others that I'd stand out less if they didn't put handcuffs on me and try to hide my face. Thanks to that, I'd be able to walk outside as a normal high school kid one last time. I bowed one last time to Shinjo then turned to Kinusato. The time has come. Fairly well. Kinusato nodded weakly and I nodded back. And then I headed for the exit. Ah, Seems there's one last thing. I stopped and turned around. あやうく聞き忘れるところだった。取り立てて重要なことではないんだが。彼女の名前と年齢だ。なぜ彼女は尾上セリカだったんだ。年齢に意味はあったのか。It was actually something I've been thinking about for a long time after we were first apart. It was the first step of a very big mistake. When I'd finally found the answer, I burst out laughing. Namaiwa,僕の両親の名前をローマ字書きしたアナグラムでした。So that explains it. Much in the same way that Yumi Aozaki was an anagram of Uki Yamazoe. Another mystery revealed.
Sanyo Miyashiro and Eriko Miyashiro. Rearrange Sanyo and Eriko. Honto no Yani Motomerio Nakoto. Boko a Kanojo ni Motomete and the Shone. Dakara Sona Namani Standa to Moimas. Demo Oyano Yakuario Kanojo ni Motometa no Nara. No. He may may have wanted par parental affection, but there was a reason why Serika was essentially the same age as Takuru. So na fu ni oya o motomete iru jibun o mitometa kuna katta desu. Dakara kanojo wa toshiue de wa ikenakatta. Boku ga mamoru beki. Oh, okay, yeah, Sarah's younger. Kodomonagarani, If I wasn't mistaken, I caught a glimpse of gentleness in her expression. I was going to say that, but then you went and said it for me, so... There it is. But yes. Sarah Kurnoe now has her own existence. I smiled back at her and turned away. I made my stride a little longer than usual so my resolve wouldn't waver. And then I stepped out the door. Luckily, there are no paparazzi outside. It had been forever since I'd been outside, and the weather was beautiful. I was so used to the darkness that the strong sunlight hurt my eye, uh, stung my eyes. The wind was a little cold, but it felt good. It swirled by, as if purifying my whole body. I was surprised not to see any reporters or gawkers. But I later learned that Kay, aka Kunasado, had given the media and internet false information. Kudos to thee. I walked for a while until I saw a black car stopped on the side of the road. Well, that's certainly not conspicuous at all, is it? It was probably the transport car. Either that or the vehicle from Men in Black. Just remember never to push the red button except in certain circumstances. I felt, the sudden I felt a sense of deja vu and stopped to look around. And then I remembered. So this was a corner of AH Tokyo General Hospital. Six years ago, during the earthquake, it had been an evacuation shelter. The detective saw that I'd stopped and asked me what was wrong. This is all where it all went down. In reality, in a very real sense, this part of the hospital right here on the outside was where Sirico Noe was first born to existence, where she was truly born. But there were too many feelings inside me to explain. That's right. This is where I created her. <laughs> I stood there in silent shock. Nearby, in the bright sunlight, just a few seconds away if I were to run. Achievement unlocked. CG complete. She was standing there, 
along with another girl, probably uh, Aoi or Ayaka. But there she is, Sarah Konoe. The girl for I thought for sure I'd never meet again. She was looking at me, as if uncertain whether to smile, cry, or get mad. It was a girl next to her that I didn't know about, about the same age. Why? She was drawn here unconsciously, I would say. I couldn't look away. I couldn't move. We were so close, but we were staring at each other across a distance that could never be crossed. The detective told me to start walking. I couldn't answer. I realized that my fists were clenched. Seriko? I heard a pretty voice. A soft wind seemed to be carrying it to me. The answer to that question is... Yes, and no. I didn't know what feelings were being exchanged between us, but I could see tears forming in her eyes. <laughs> Indeed. She may not fully remember, but she knows that this is where their paths must part. And the tears fell without a sound. She was smiling. The girl next to her must have been her best friend. She wiped away her tears and smiled so that her friend wouldn't see them. And there is nothing more to be said. And then she turned around and walked away from me. She gets to live. Time started to move again and a smile formed on my face as well. <laughs> Not anymore. From here on out, Seruka no way. Your path is of your own choosing. The sun stung my eyes. I looked up at the sky, so that the sudden tears wouldn't fall to the ground. I was crying tears of joy. That's what I believed. That's what I had to believe. Everything was for the best. Sorry. Indeed, there's no turning back, and there's no time for regrets now. I said to the detective. Then I started to walk. I didn't look at her as she got further away. We would never see each other again. And the paths we walked would never cross. That was how we would live our lives together on divergent paths. The end. The real end. Silent Sky End. Achievement unlocked, Chaos Child. 
Achievement unlocked. Sound complete. Getting all of the achievements. Well, probably most of them, anyway. And as you can see, the, uh... The music has changed. It is no longer the creepy, ominous theme that we heard in the very first episode. Oh no. It is, sorry. My microphone is just, uh... Oh no, it isn't. Or is it? No, no, it has changed. So yeah. After so long, so many hours, so many episodes, it is time to say goodbye to Let's Play Chaos Child. I'm your host, the Dungeon Master, I hoped and I still hope that you enjoyed this Let's Play adventure from beginning to end. And I shall leave you here for the time being, fellow viewers. Because even though this chapter in the science adventure series is over, as one door closes, Another door opens in the next Let's Play Adventure in the Science Adventure series as I begin the long, arduous journey through the third entry of the mainline adventure series Robotics Notes Elite. As always, dear adventurers, until next we meet, farewell.